so here you see um, Visual Studio Code with uh, the Code Real Time extension installed. Uh, like to mention a, th a few things here. So you see it, it's a community edition. Uh, this has actually been already out on the Visual Studio Marketplace for approximately a year in beta state. Uh, that, but back then we called this extension Artist in Code, but now it has been renamed in accordance to the new model real time name. We call it Code Real Time. And the meaning of the community edition is that it's free for everyone to use. Uh, so we, we want to do this slightly differently than we do with model real time to try to attract a larger user base. So, for example, if you are a university or uh, want to do work with this tool for non-commercial purposes, you are welcome to just download this and and uh, start use it without any, any license. Um, if you want, then you can upgrade to the commercial edition, and that is the version that. All of you who are entitled to more real time also can use uh, free of charge. Um, and then, of course, you get the usual benefits of use, using the commercial edition, which means, for example, support. Uh, the source code of, of the target RTS is not included if you are just using the community edition. Uh, there is also watermark in the built applications if you use the community edition, which you don't have if you have the commercial edition. And most importantly, probably of course is that with the commercial edition you can use the tool for commercial purposes um, also it, it's in many ways very similar to model real time but there are of, of course also some differences so similar to model real time you need to have a c++ environment installed in visual studio code uh, you can choose between c++ from visual studio code which is uh, an extension provided by microsoft there is also one based on the CLang language server that you can use. Uh, in addition to Visual Studio Code, we also support Eclipse Thea, uh, and uh, they are, it's a very similar idea, at least from the very first looks of it. It looks very similar. Uh, Thea has uh, more extens extensibility options that you may be interested in, and it's also um, possible to run Thea in a web browser, uh, and not just as a desktop application. And for Thea, uh, it's the uh, CLang language server that you have to install since the Microsoft Visual Studio Code one is not available for Thea due to license uh, restrictions for Microsoft. Uh, so let's uh, take a look at. Um... Sorry, was there a question? OK, uh, then let's take a look at a sample. So. To the left here, you see the Explore view. This is similar to the Explore view in, in Eclipse. Uh, you can have as many uh, projects as you like here, although they are not called projects in VS Code, but um, workspace folders, but they are more or less the same. So here I have uh, a bunch of uh, workspace folders in my workspace, and the one I will uh, talk about now is a sample uh, Pi computer, which basically is a sample that computes an approximate value of Pi using two communicating state machines. Uh, a good way to start um, understanding how an application works in code real time is to do the same thing as you would do in model real time. You would start by opening the transmission configuration. And here you can see that we use the same kind of transmission configurations as we use in model real time. It's actually exactly the same JavaScript format as you're used to. Uh, the difference is, however, that we here open the, the text view first that corresponds to the code tab in the model real time. But here, since uh, these code and Thea are more text centric IDs, this is what you get up um, uh, by default when you just opening the file. But you can also right click and open a user interface and then you get something that is more similar to the tabs that you have for the TC editor in in model real time. And these views are synced, so if you edit, like for example, a copyright text here, then click outside, then it will be updated in the text. Uh, and you can, of course, sh also change here if you like. And then when you save, it will also be updated here. Uh, and you can delete properties using this little button here, or of course, just delete the text if, if you like to do it. So this view to the right here is great when you are learning the tool. Maybe you don't know what TC properties are available because we support most properties from model real time, but not all. So that if you compare this list with what we have in model real time, you will see that there are still some TC properties that we don't yet support. 
uh, you can also, of course, here, if you prefer textual editing, you can just press a dot after TC and then you will get the list of uh, available commands here. If you hover your mouse over here, you will get uh, documentation about what how what this property means. But for now, I will not specify any properties because uh, this already contains the properties that I need. And uh, the minimal thing you need to specify for an executable is the top capsule, which of course is the entry point to the application. And it's mandatory for executable to specify that. And we also need to specify the target folder, which is basically where should we put the generated files and the make file and, and uh, the uh, executables that or binaries that we produce. Uh, so if you want to go to the top capsule, you can control click here to navigate into uh, the art file and art files. Uh, those are the source files in code real time. They correspond to the EMX and EFX files of model real time. But you see that in, instead of using XML for storing uh, the information here, we use a textual language. Uh, this language is um, called art and uh, it, it has the same concepts that you are used to from model real time. So like you will find capsule ports connectors, state machines, etc. So it's it's same, same, but different. And the difference is mostly in syntax, since um, the concepts, you know what they are and how they work. The syntax is, of course, a bit new that, and, and uh, may require a bit of uh, getting used to. Um, just like in model real time, there are code snippets included here. So you see, for example, here we have a, a, an implementation preface for this capsule using this little um, RT colon colon syntax. So these are the code that will be put uh, in the implementation file uh, at the beginning. And you can use it, for example, for including header files in the, that C++ file. We also use uh, a C++ code for like entry action. So here you have an example and, and the code is put between backticks. And that is the syntax. And here you have a slightly bigger code snippet, snippet that is the effect of a, of a transition. Um, yeah, and you, you can of course edit here freely just like you want. But for now, let's uh, take a look at the graphical representation of this and you can right click here and open the structure diagram. That's usually a, a good way to learn about the application if you look at the structure diagram of, of the top capsule. Here we see that um, this Pi computer consists of two capsule parts, the adder and the multiplier that are connected here. And there is also a behavior port computer, which is connected to a port on the adder. So the difference compared to model real time is that we allow that you view uh, the content of capsule parts in lines. So you don't need to like double click and open a separate editor, but you can just expand these nodes to, to look inside them. So for example, now when I expand this, you, you saw that these ports, which previously were just shown as ports, they are revealed to be shown as behavior ports. Because that's something that a caller doesn't need to know, but it's part of the in internals of, of this uh, capsule. And you also see that it has a, a log port inside it. We can also then, of course, drill down and go to the state machine. Assume we want to look at the state machine for this adder capsule, then we can select it and press control space. Control space is, by the way, a very useful uh, command in both uh, VS Code and Thea for doing many things like creating stuff and navigating and things like that. And here we can see we have some graphical commands and we have uh, these commands for opening related diagrams. We can go to the state diagram of, of this uh, capsule and uh, see it, how it looks here. Uh, so very similar to the structure diagrams, we also have the possibility to expand composite states. So you can view in you view it in line what substates it contain. So if we're interested in what this computing state does, we can just expand it here and see that it has a nested state called wait for increment. And, and this uh, principle of, of of having or well, allowing inline expansion of symbols lead to a much fewer open editors than in mod real time. So uh, that, that, that's one of the goals we had that we want to reduce the number of open editors since that adds a bit to the complexity. Uh, these diagrams are uh, auto layouted. So at the moment it's not possible to like move things around here. 
Um, that's of course both good and bad. The good thing is that you don't need to spend time on fiddling with layout. The bad thing is that you cannot control how the layout should look like right now. So, um, and, and we will most likely uh, soon work on improving this so that you can add additional information to, to, for example, say that I want this state to be up here or I want some lines to go in, in a different way. But for the time being, uh, there we use auto layout here only. Um, so now let's, uh, I mean, and this diagram, you can use it for visualization, of course, to understand uh, state machines or composite structure. You can also use it for navigation. So if I double click anything in the diagram, uh, we put the cursor on the corresponding place in the art file. So here we have the initial transition that I just selected here. So that it's useful for both th those uh, things. Um, then, of course, we have the generated code. And uh, if I take an, an example here, we can take uh, this code snippet here. Uh, if I click open C++ here, I will open uh, the generated code for, for this code snippet. So, uh, and it, the cursor is put ne next to it here. Um, actually, let me open it both at the same time so we can, can check both. Uh, Here I have both files and I will put them next to each other so we can see both at the same time. This code snippet up here corresponds to this one in the generated code. And just like in model real time, we use these USR uh, comment blocks around the code snippet so that you know uh, where, the, where they come from. You can also use this for navigation. So if you control link, you can control click, you can jump to the corresponding code in the art file. But it works to edit the code either here in the art file. So if I if I write a comment here, see that it's immediately updated down here. And that's a difference compared to uh, model real time. That code generation happens on the fly in the background all the time. So you always have up to date C++ code. Uh, it this requires that you have set the TCS active. So you see there is a little check mark here. I did that before the demo, but the way to do it is to right click and do set as active. So same as you would do in, in model real time. But it's important to do this uh, before you start editing, because when we know what TC is active, then we can also generate the code on the fly to always have it up to date. And this means that you can also choose to edit down here. So if you, uh, let's say you uh, change this comment here and you save, then it will be updated here uh, in the art file. So this is uh, the same as uh, how code to model sync works in model real time, but uh, without any dialogue. We just do the change as soon as something is saved here in the generated code. Um, now let's see if we can make a little bit more space here and do some editing. Uh, so if I go up to this state machine and I add a new state, I can do that in the art file, and that's probably where most people will prefer to do it because here you have a very excellent support that is brought by VS Code and the same in, in Eclipse 3 uh, thanks to this uh, code editor. And you can use control space to create different things. So here, here are templates that help you to create uh, different things without having to know the syntax for it. So for example, if I want to create a new state, I can just do like this and uh, you see uh, the new state was added to the diagram automatically. And also if we scroll here to the beginning of uh, this generated code, we see that this uh, state array also now contains the new state. Um, we can also choose to make to edit in the diagram if we like to. And the way to do that is to just click somewhere in the diagram and then press control space. Then you have the same commands here. So you can create a new state like this. And you, you probably saw the way it was done, and that is by putting the cursor at the right place in the art file so that user can type the name of the state and then the diagram is updated automatically. And of course, the code is also updated automatically. So these three views, the, the graphical view, the art file view, and the uh, view with the generated code are always kept up to sync. So you can choose whether you prefer to edit something in, in any of these uh, abstraction levels. You can even even create transitions between two states if you select them both and you press control space, then you can create a trigger transition like this. Uh, then you see the it appears down here. You can start to type uh, the 
code. Um, but you can also, of course, also get errors here, uh, showing that you need to specify the port and the event for this transition bit to be complete. And we can use a control space to pick uh, one of the existing ports, take the, this port, and then when you type dot, you get the available events uh, there. And now uh, the transition is correct. So you can basically choose if you want to edit in diagrams and in code. And I think in beginning, maybe diagram is easier before you have learned this syntax. But after a while, uh, editing in this text view here is uh, it's faster, right, basically. So now let's delete these new things I created. Uh, this transition and also this state. And I will also delete this new state I had here in the beginning because I don't need them. I will say I'm, I'm back to the original state. Uh, now let's try to build the application. Uh, so to do that, I can just right click on the TC and do build. And uh, now since the code was, is already generated, this is uh, quite fast because everything it has to do now is to generate um, a make file and then it will uh, invoke uh, make on that make file and here in the terminal you can see exactly what compilation commands that that were that it, it performed and we can run this application also by right clicking here on the tc and you get the output here in in the terminal here you can see it computer an approximate value for for pi using these two state machines um yeah so right now uh, like i said everything here is uh, auto layouted we do support some non-semantic information to be added. So for example, if you would like to mark this in state in some color, you can do this from this property page. Uh, and that can help maybe to make the diagram look a bit nicer. Uh, this information is then stored using properties that uh, can be put on any element in this uh, art file. So there are a bunch of properties uh, that most of you, most of which you will recognize from um, model real time. So, and for example, if you put your cursor after a, a name and you press control space, you have these new properties. Then you can just press control space again and you see many kinds of properties. Uh, for example, here we have uh, the generate file header, which corresponds to this, the checkbox that you have in model real time, whether a header file should be generated for this or not. Then you can say uh, true, which is the default. Maybe you should say false instead. And now no header file will be generated for this capture anymore. OK, this was a very quick uh, introduction to uh, code real time. There are a lot much more, of course, to be said uh, about this. Uh, that uh, what we will have time with now. So maybe I just like to highlight uh, where you can read more about it. So this is the website for code real time uh, where you can click on the documentation tab here, here and then you will uh, can read everything about this tool maybe the art language section is where you would like to start uh, because here we go through the the this art language the the syntax that i showed you so you know how to, to type here and there are a bunch of samples you can start uh, playing with it if you want to work with something that is already working uh, for example if you go to the welcome page close some of this here uh, to make some more space here there is uh, get get started with the code real time which is an interactive tutorial that um, starts by cloning a sample repo and then you can start uh, uh, working with a sample that is already there from the beginning